In this video, I'd like to introduce the concept of graphical user interfaces. So you can see that I've actually created a graphical user interface to represent the computer menu that we made in a previous video. This has all the same functionality that our previous uh, computer menu had, except now I've got buttons and other display options for the user to use. So it feels more like a complete program. Um, let me run through how this works very quickly, and then I'll go through some of the code and show you how to create your own user interfaces. So you can see from my uh, GUI here that I've got a button called Create a New Computer, and when I click on this, it asks me, it pops up another little box that asks me how much memory this computer has. So I'll go ahead and type in a value. Then it asks me how much processing speed the computer has. And this time, let me type in a bad value. Let me type in a negative value just to show you what it's going to do. It prompts me again since I gave it a negative value and asks me to please enter in a positive value. So this time I will comply and enter in a positive value. Then it asks me what the size of the computer is, so I'll type in another value for that. And then finally it asks me what the brand of this particular computer is, so I'll type in the brand of my computer. And since I've now given it every piece of information that it needs to create a computer, at this point, it will create that computer object for me, and you see the computer that I just created now appears on this list. Every time I create a new computer, let me create another one very quickly here with some values, you can see that it just adds another computer to that list. So now, if I want to use the other features of my menu, you see that I'm able to select these options. So let me select the top computer and then click the second button, which is going to allow me to change the processor of my selected computer. When I click that button, it asks me to enter a value for the new processor. The old value was 15, so let me type in a different value. I'll say 500. And now you see that when I um, take a look at the list here, the new value of 500 is now shown. The same thing works for adding memory. So if I want to add memory to a particular computer, I select how much memory I want to add, and it will add that memory onto that particular computer for me and update the list accordingly. So now that we've seen how this simple graphical user interface works, um, let me show you the code behind it. And before I begin, I want to note that a lot of this code was actually generated for me automatically. I'm going to show you how to generate some of that code uh, yourself in just a little bit. But I want to go over the parts of the code that I have written. So some of the things that I've done are up here at the top, I added some uh, fields for the list model and the list. That is going to be the list of computers that we see over here on the right-hand side of the screen. And then down here, you see that I've got um, a few different methods called action performed. And these are going to handle the behaviors that I want to occur whenever I click one of these buttons. So the first one that we see here on the screen right now that I've highlighted is the one that's going to occur when I click the Create New Computer button. You see that what it does is it gets the selected index from my list object, right? So whatever one is currently selected. And then it asks the users a series of questions using dialog boxes. So those dialog boxes are actually inside of a method that I've called get positive value. Let me scroll down to the bottom and show you that, because this will show you how dialog boxes are used and how we perform user validation for these applications. You see that the first thing that it does is it calls this method called show input dialog on the J option pane class. And then I provided a whole bunch of information, including the prompt, which is just an input to the method, the title, which is also an input to the method, what kind of option pane I want it to be, a few null values that represent things that we don't really care about in this particular uh, dialog box, and then finally an empty string. When I plug all of these in, what I get is what you see when I click this Create New Computer button, I get a dialog box with a text box that's waiting for me to type some value into it. The problem that we have with these dialog boxes is that they actually return strings. So if I want to use a double, then I have to actually convert that string into a different type, into the double type. That's what this line does here. This takes the result from the dialog box, whatever they typed into the box, and it parses it into a double. 
so that I can check to see if it's less than zero, since I'm looking for positive values, and then reprompt them for a positive value if they gave me an inappropriate value in the text box. When they do finally give me an appropriate value, I simply return whatever value that is that was created. And then if we go back up here to the top, you see that that value gets stored and I will eventually use it to create a new computer object. So that same process is repeated a few times, once for the memory, once for the processing speed, and once for the size of the computer. For the last one, for the name, I just create another dialog box and take the string as it is. There's no verification required. I will just accept whatever they type into that particular dialog box. Finally, once that's finished, I have all the pieces I need to create a new computer. So I do that on this line here. And finally, I add this to my list model. Now, what is a list model? Well, a list model is going to be the list of stuff that's represented in that list box. So you see here, I have this list model. It behaves very much like an array list. In fact, if you look at the way that it's defined, I see these angle brackets again with the types of objects that are stored inside of that list model. In this case, I'm storing computer objects. So I call this method to add the particular object to my list model. I have similar action performed methods defined for the other buttons in my GUI. So here's the one for adding a new processor, and here's the one for adding uh, more memory, and you can see they behave in a similar fashion. That covers most of the code that I actually wrote myself for this particular GUI. A lot of the other stuff that you see here was actually generated for me automatically. So let me show you how that works next. If you want to create a new user interface, a new GUI, what you want to do is go up to the location, the package that you want that GUI to be in, select new, and then go down to other, the very last option on the list. Then you'll see an option here for a window builder. The one that I picked is called an application window. This is the main window that I'll see when I start my application. So I'm going to go ahead and click application window and give this a name. In this case, I'll just create a simple name, call it new form. And now when I click finish, you'll see that it's already generated a significant portion of code for me. If there's anything that I need to track my objects, for example, that list model that I created in the previous form, I can add those up here at the top. If I want to start adding elements to my GUI, then down here there's a tab called Design. You can see it right next to the Source tab. So if I click on Design, it takes me to the Design page and now I have access to all sorts of different GUI elements. I'm not going to go over the different types of elements right now. There are way too many for me to cover in this video, but this is where the Java documentation is going to be your friend. Each of these has its own set of behaviors, its own set of properties associated with it that you can use to control the user interface to your application. So in the case of the application that I just showed you, the first thing that I did was I selected a layout, in this case an absolute layout, and I dropped it onto the window by clicking Absolute Layout and then clicking the window. The next thing that I did was I grabbed a J list. That's the list of all the computer objects that you saw on the right hand side of the uh, window. So I clicked J list and then I clicked the position on the window where I want it to be. It looks like a little black dot, but you see I can actually grab that and try to resize it so that I can actually see the list window make it the appropriate size that I want. And then I can move this around to place it exactly where I want it to be within the window, making sure to leave enough space to display all of the information. Next thing I did was I added some buttons. So there's a thing down here called J button. So if I click that, I can drop some buttons in here and give the button a label. and resize the button and reposition the button if I want to as well. So I did that for a few buttons. I can also change the title of this by clicking the main window bar and finding the title property down here and adding in the new title that I want. You see it automatically appears at the top. Now what happens when I do all of this stuff? Let me switch back to the source tab real quick and show you 
every time I add a new element, every time I add a new list or a new button, you see that code automatically gets added to this form to incorporate that new stuff. Here's the title that I added, here's the list that I added, and here's the button that I added. So a lot of this code is being generated for me automatically so that I don't have to program the exact position of every element myself. The last thing I want to show you is how to actually perform the action. So what do I want to happen when somebody clicks a button? In order to set that up, all you need to do is find the particular button you're interested in and double click it. And when that happens, it takes you back to the source. Only this time, it's got an empty method for me to fill out. So you see here, I've got this empty method called action performed. This is actually called an event handler. We don't know when somebody's going to click a button or, uh, you know, do something with our application. So what we do is we add event listeners that listen for specific actions that we expect to occur, such as mouse clicks. And then when those mouse clicks happen, we simply define the behavior that we want to occur based on that particular mouse click. So I can then fill this method with anything that I want to happen. In this case, I'll just put a simple print statement. And now whenever the user clicks that particular button, it will perform whatever is inside of this particular event handler, which is really just a method. I can access any of the fields that I have in my class um, or any other values inside of this method. OK, that's going to wrap it up for my introduction to GUIs. I just scratched the surface of what you can do with user interfaces. There is a lot, a lot of stuff that you can do, a lot of reading, actually, that you should probably do before you start diving into creating your own user interfaces. But I did want to introduce you to the topic. Um, if you are interested in learning more, perhaps for your project, I would highly encourage you to read the other links posted to the website or start taking a look at some examples in the Java documentation.